Wow, what was that? that was, that's my wife. Oh. She's grabbing uh, some things and getting out of here. <laughs> on whatever you're trusting. Would you get the fuck out of here? We're recording right now. <laughs> Maybe she wants to be on the podcast. I mean, why nope. not? Nope. I nope. CES. Yeah. Hey, everyone. What, what do you know about CES? Podcast. Do you know anything interesting about CES? This is your chance. I'm going to it next week. Yeah, that's not, our listeners don't give a shit about that. <laughs> Can I be a special guest after I go? If you have anything interesting to talk about, tech related. Well, you should send me with an agenda, with like an assignment. Yeah, we can do that. You don't have to go look for the XPS 13 anymore because that already came out and I bought one today. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh man, I need a bigger lock on this door. Yeah, I, I'll, really all I've adjusted on this thing is probably gain and positioning. I know how to position it. Right. But it's very basic. I'm not doing anything, any fancy special effects. It's just my yep. voice. What can I say? I have a voice for the microphone. You've got, you got good pipes. I've got, well, hey, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you, even got, you even got some kudos for that on the on the Facebook. Yeah, today was really cool, actually. I, I nerded out a lot today just because... Uh, you know, putting out that, so I put that video out and it was me in my t-shirt and a hat and it was on the phone and it was very quick. Hey, how you doing? Coffee code cast, da 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 da, check us out. And fucking hey, there was a lot of engagement on that one little post. Dude, I was, I was amped up like all day. You like your little marketing effort there, like clearly the, uh, the Gary Vaynerchuk marketing help is is pushing us forward because uh yeah yeah i mean there's a lot of good response on that you got a ton of impressions views whatever the hell you want to call them yeah, yeah, ton yeah. Of people reached out it's it's cool i'm very inspired right now by gary's been working his magic with me i'm feeling the gary vibes flowing through it's good this is number seven and remember we had such high ambition and goals at the outset of this thing right i think i think like, <laughs> i think our Goal was to just say something for 30 minutes and post it online and let's not give too many fucks about who listens or if anybody listens. So it's been really cool to start to engage and and we're getting better each time, learning new tricks and tips along the way, hopefully bringing some value to the people that are listening. I think it's entertainment value on some level, but hopefully it's informational too. I think it is. Yeah, a number of people have told me they appreciate uh, our large amount of bullshit. Yeah. Our little uh, conversational bullshit back and forth, the banter, if you will. I think it's fun. It's to do something a little different. It doesn't have to be one-dimensional, hey, we're just here to bring you the news. You can already get the news on the phone. We're not talking about groundbreaking things on the show here. Like All this stuff is already out there. We're not really creating new content. We're just regurgitating it. But I think the way we do it is entertaining, and I enjoy it. And, and, and the other part of it too, is that we're curating things that are out there. We're finding kind of different pieces to bring together that you're not, you know, it's a more, just something that's more distilled. You're not just getting a list of headlines from the news, but we're trying to bring in a few different topics to talk about as well. And maybe, maybe we portray it in a way that's clearer or easier to understand for, for some folks. I don't know. Let me wrap up what we were saying, though, with just a little bit here. So it was very exciting today. We've tried some new things with social media. It's really brand new for us. We don't know what the hell we're doing, right? We decided to just start a podcast because we wanted to get more comfortable stretching ourselves a little bit. We wanted to do it for a long time, talked about it for a while, just never really. I, I wanted to do it. That was something I talked about in my, I have a video for the other project that I'm going to release shortly, but but that was one of the things I mentioned in there is that Probably for at least five years, Kyle, I wanted to do that, do this thing. I didn't know it would be this, but I wanted to do something and, and give back because, you know, I'm on Stack Overflow for 10 years, stealing other people's <laughs> thoughts. 
<laughs> right? Learning, finding my way through the community that, and it supported me in a big way. And I always wanted to give back, but I, I was held back just by fear. I was really afraid to do it. And it's been a joy working on this thing with you so far. Who knows what will happen with it? But even if we have more days like today where we get to hear from other people and reconnect with old coworkers and just the connection of it, I think that's exciting by itself, just the connection, who we can meet and talk to and that sort of thing. That's what gets me excited for sure is just hearing people respond to what we said or what we're doing, uh, come back with, with feedback of any kind. I don't care if it's negative and they say, hey, you need to change this or that. Uh, or if it's good, you know, I think just hearing people's response to stuff that we're saying and doing, I think that's, that makes it worth, uh, makes it even more worthwhile because it's already worth it for me just from the standpoint of trying to learn to speak a little better. You know, yes. we were just talking earlier today, we were just kind of like critiquing ourselves and being like, God damn it, we suck. I say, you know, 15 times, like in 20 minutes, it's ridiculous. 15 but times in one minute, Kyle, I wrote it down, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty bad. But I mean, that's why we did this. So that was the point. I wrote it down on my pad right now. So if you're paying attention, I shouldn't have been saying it at all tonight. I don't think I have yet. I hope. I think one other item that I want to mention that I think is exciting and maybe I'll have to cut this out. I don't know exactly how this is going to come to fruition, but we might have another person joining us on the show, at least for a show. I wanted to talk about that too, because you were just mentioning how you like the feedback and you like hearing from other people. And that was a cool thing that happened this afternoon with one of our coworkers, one of our colleagues, esteemed colleagues, who will remain nameless until he decides to come on and name himself. <laughs> I'm fine with that. If he doesn't want to come on, he doesn't have to. I think he will. He's just a little- Yeah, nervous. I don't want to put the pressure on him. He's Yeah, exactly. He's the same as we were when we started. He's very nervous about the way he's going to sound and the way he's going to come off. And he's very worried about making mistakes and, and people calling him out on it, which is fair. I, we have the same problem. Um, but to your point, last episode, you know, he just needs- Oh, there it is. Fuck, you know. So I was doing some research. We'll come back to this piece in just a second. I was doing some research earlier today. I thought, how can I prevent myself from saying these things because they're so habitual? I'm not paying attention. I was in a zone the other day. Slow down, right? Well, maybe slow down. I was looking for more like shock treatment. I was looking for bracelets or wristbands. <laughs> <laughs> they have those things for habit building. There's, I don't remember the name of the product, but you can get that thing. And if you're in bed, it's an alarm clock, right? You put it on your wrist and it'll go off. It'll give you a vibration. And you have, I don't know, 10 seconds, 30 seconds a minute. Maybe it's configurable. But if you don't get the fuck up, bzz, <laughs> so I thought, wouldn't it be cool? This could be a Kickstarter. This could really get us off the ground here running, but we could adapt that product or maybe we could tap into their API if they have an API and build it so that you put certain words and phrases in and build a microphone into the thing. And if you say it, if you say any of that shit, or maybe it's just a software on your computer. The software will send a shock notification to the API of the wristband and then give you a little blast if you say any of those restricted words. There might be some privacy concerns with that. I'm I'm not sure because you might be sending like everything the person says to a translation service. <laughs> I just don't think that's going to go well. I don't know. Other Alexa's already doing it anyway. I mean, it'll come out in a couple of years. So who knows? I I would use it just for myself. Even if we didn't sell one of them, I would use it for myself and check it out. I don't think it's a hard. Sh I don't know. Is it like a shock collar on a dog? I'm not really sure how much it is. I I never really tried those because it makes me nervous. To, like I think it's going to be this huge thing. Yeah, you say you know, and it just drops you to your knees. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like a shotgun of <laughs> one point twenty one gigawatts of you know battery juice. So anyway, getting back to what we were saying earlier, though, we had a good conversation. We had and we had good feedback. He gave us some good feedback. I thought. I agree. I uh, I think he's done a lot of research into that subject. So. I think he'd be a very good person to bring on the show to talk about it. Uh, and I'm excited for him to do it. I think he'd be a very good contributor, even if he only wants to do it one episode. I honestly, in in my heart of hearts, I kind of hope that he would just join us and do it on the regular. Because I think, as I mentioned to you earlier, I think three people works really, really well. Because yeah. if you have one person that isn't totally interested in that conversation, the other two can bullshit for a while, or you can kind of round robin it and get a number of opinions 
and differing opinions, which is going to make the show even better. Well, I'm all for it. This thing's evolutionary. We're going to make changes. We already have made some. We're going to do some other things differently. We know we're going to bring on some guest speakers for one thing, because we don't want to just some of these topics that go more in depth. I want to bring somebody else in who has a different perspective for sure. So yeah, we'll see where it goes with him. But we're, you know, it was the topic of net neutrality. Damn it. I just did it. I, I said it. I would have gotten shocked if I caught myself. What did you say? I missed it. I slid a, you know, in there, motherfucker. Damn it. Well, maybe what we should do instead is we could get like a remote shock bracelet. So if you're listening to me and I say it, you can shock me remotely. Oh, fun. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, that'd be good. I, that, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't be rife with abuse at all. Can we establish some healthy boundaries around it? You can't just fucking hit the <laughs> button just to be a funny guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got my nuke button on the desk here. It's bigger than yours. This is, <laughs> well, <laughs> we, we don't have that much time to talk tonight. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, that'll have to be reserved for another episode. <laughs> anyway, it was a great opportunity. We did the net neutrality piece and we were, we were trying to put it together with, with what we had, but you know, he understood that I did it again. See, I fucking did it again. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> we did the piece. He listened to it and he had some constructive feedback and, and pointed out that we missed a few points. Had a few things that he would add. Send us over some articles. This is the type of thing that we encourage. This is what we want to have happen. So I said to him, look, you understand some of these things better than we do. Why don't you come on and talk to us about it? Right. And he's listened to a handful of podcasts that are deep dives on the subject. So he's got a pretty good breadth of knowledge on it. So I, I definitely would encourage bringing him on. I hope he does it. And he brings the youthful voice to the show because we're old dudes at this point. He, he does bring some youth to the program if he comes on. And I'll say this, and this is true whether he decides to come on or not, but I love working with him because I tell you, the guy is very thorough in his evaluation. He's not, some guys just want to get out there and just get the job done. How quickly can I get from A to B? Yeah, maybe it's a little rough around the edges code. Maybe it's not fully tested. He's not one of these guys also who's going to test the shit out of it and make it perfect. But I think what he's, his strength is, is that he's trying to be pragmatic about it. You, here's the task. Here's what I need to accomplish. Here's the deadline. But Am I doing it in a way that is going to be helpful for the next guy? Am I doing it the you know a good enough way? I did it again, motherfucker. <laughs> oh. You're gonna catch you're gonna catch it here because now you're really pissing yourself off with it. So at least I'm hearing it this time. I didn't hear it once last time live, and then listening to it drove me yep. crazy. Yep. That's what I want to say about him. That's that's what I think about him. He's he's got this little piece of, I don't know how you want to describe it, but there's this analytical side that's always questioning, is this really the right way to go about it? Or is there a better way? Or is there, you know, and yet very practical and pragmatic about getting things done. I really appreciate well, that. Well, I don't, you know, I, damn it, I did it too. I don't know if we want to uh, continue to feed his ego. Yeah, you have to work with him every day. I don't, I don't really interact with him that often, so... I could be full of shit. He might not really be like that in the day to day. <laughs> no, he's great. I definitely appreciate having him around. And I, I think he's a very, very solid asset for the company. And, and he was a great hire. And I appreciate everything that he provides. So let's move on. Let's move on to some uh, follow up and show news. It looks like you are full of it here. Well, I had some things in here, it, but I have a few things I want to talk about. First part. Oh, yeah. The domain is up. We figured that out through a little trial and error today, www.coffeecodecast.com is live, goes to the Libsyn website now. It resolves also to the non dub dub dub. So domains up, that's good. We figured we had some DNS propagation issues earlier. They're resolved now as far as we know. So you should go there to that site and listen to this wonderful episode, number eight, along with all the others in the lineup. Number two is the most heavily downloaded episode, by the way, 130 times downloaded so far. The parental advisory is, is everybody likes it. Yeah. It was the introduction to the F-bomb that we'd be, you know, we're going to be cussing a <laughs> little fucks, a little shits and motherfucker occasionally. Maybe, maybe in the podcast world, swearing cells, kind of like sex cells, you know? 
Yeah, I think you know, you know, you know, you know. Now you're doing it. At least I passed it on to you. (laughs) I'm feeling good now. This is getting out of my system. (laughs) This is getting out of control. Getting out of hand here. Woo! The domain's up. The second piece of of show news and follow up. This was exciting. So last night I was up late uh, working on some shit. I was working on a project and I went to bed around 1230. And I was checking my phone and somebody had posted that the Dell XPS 13 was released. And I thought this can't be really happening because CES isn't until the 9th. This is way too premature. And did a little investigating and found out that they released the new model at midnight. They had a big press release and it wasn't available for sale last night. I would have ordered it. I couldn't find it anywhere. I spent 45 minutes looking at Dell's website, trying to figure out if they had updated the machines yet. I didn't see the update. Anyway, new XPS 13 is out. I ordered it. It's going to be here Jan 18, two weeks. I'm very excited to get this in. They made some nice enhancements. We did get a sneak peek of the XPS last October. They gave some people a sneak peek in October and their pricing wasn't announced. It did go up a little bit, a couple hundred dollars. The baseline on the Current XPS or the old XPS was seven ninety nine. The the new one is nine ninety nine. Impressive specs though. Four K monitor or or ten eighty p. Before it was QHD, so it went from QHD to four K. Thinner, uh, smaller bezel, lighter weight. Few people aren't too happy. The camera has always been on the bottom. And the camera's still down in the bottom. It's in the center instead of the left corner. So they moved it over a little bit. That was a weird design decision. I, I get what they why they did it. They have a very slim uh, screen bezel on that d- device. So you, you, there's, no, there's no room for it on the top, right? That's right. But having it down in the corner on the left, it's like right in the corner left, right by the hinge, kind of on the right near the keyboard, pretty much. It's, it's a little bit bizarre. Not the ideal place to put it. It's the like, you know, up the nose shot or so I'm told. <laughs> It's a sleek looking laptop. It's the world's smallest 13 inch laptop and most powerful. That's the claim. I'm excited. Uh, I didn't realize when you sent me the link this afternoon, I had kind of assumed that maybe you just got itchy trigger finger and bought the old one. I didn't realize that this is already the new model that you were that you were sending me and pulling the trigger on. So that's pretty awesome. I'm excited. So I'm very stoked about this thing. I can't wait to get my hands on it. I've wanted to get rid of the the door stopper the T440 for a long time. Uh, what did I get in there? I did, I, I said I was going to do this and I did it anyway. I, like I said, I would. 512 solid state. Okay, 4K. I went with the 4K resolution. I wasn't sure if I was going to need that or not. I'm going to lose some battery on that, but it sounded really nice and I thought, why not? It's awfully minimal though, right? Wasn't the What's the difference between the 4K and the 1080 in terms of battery life? Like how much are you losing? Well, the 1080 says 19 and a half hours, which is crazy. I don't know how you'll ever get that out of it, but that's the claim. They improved the battery life on it. I think the 4K people said, I don't think anybody got close to 19 in the tests. It probably got closer to 12, maybe 14. That's on the 1080. Yeah. And I think you lose a couple hours on the 4K. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, if you're getting 10, nine to 10 hours of life out of a laptop, that's Pretty fucking solid, really. I'm not going to bitch about that. I have not gotten nine hours out of my phone barely. So, well, the Pixel 2 is Pixel Two is good, but other things I've had have never come close to that before. So it'll be a, a big improvement. Cool. I'm excited to hear more about this uh, in two weeks. When Hopefully, that'll coincide with a return trip to Seattle so you can bring it with you. Well, that is close, right? Well, let me look. I'll be out there the 10th. The next one is going to be, let me look at the door. I have a big, one of those at a glance, you know, like a three foot by two. Oh, I did it again. I fucking did it. <laughs> this is going to be a bitch to edit the show. You know that? <laughs> you got a lot of editing to do. Maybe I just leave it all in there and people can laugh at us being fucking idiots. Well, that's your call. You're the editor. I'm not going to tell you how to do your job. <laughs> just make sure it's ready to go live on Tuesday. Ooh, deadlines, deadlines, deadlines. deadlines. I have a leather portfolio thing that I ordered in, that's coming in February and that'll go nice in there. The laptop is going to fit into that thing. So, Portfolio, like a sleeve? What are you talking about? Yeah, it's, you know, the old school portfolios, 
before laptops and shit was just a leather bound notebook kind of that had room for a calculator inside and oh uh, sure i know what you're talking about notepad pens and pencils well this one is more geared towards tech so it's going to be a little larger than that and it's just really a slim briefcase really it's a little larger than a portfolio it has a zipper all the way around it on three sides and then you know it folds open and there's room for the laptop room for kindle room for the phone earphones backup battery pen pencil all the stuff for me it's all the stuff that i bring on the airplane and right now i just have to pull it out of my bag and carry it onto the plane and it's a big fucking mess and i throw it on my seat and then get my bag up there and da. this is i have it all in one thing i just keep it that way I go through security with it and well let's uh link that up too people might be interested in in that and maybe they want one for themselves so it's a beautiful product it was a kickstarter i find a lot of these things on kickstarter and this one is satchel and page oh we're on the topic let me just pull it up it's called satchel and page it's the port series i'll give you a link to that so i got the port 13 inch they make them they make them in different sizes they haven't released them yet they're coming out soon real cool looking room for all your stuff you can put credit cards passport keys charges up to two of your devices on the go anyway it was a kickstarter it was huge hugely successful they raised three hundred and twenty thousand dollars to build this thing and they have other stats that i don't really understand or appreciate about the leather and the build quality and it's italian veg leather veg vegetable vegetarian what is it where's this thing at <laughs> some kind of tan i don't know consortium tuscan vegetable tanneries if you like vegetable <laughs> you sound tanneries, like you just you sound like you're just saying shit yeah, I'm just it's a random word generator. I threw a few things in there and this is what's telling me. <laughs> yeah, so it looks kind of like um gosh, what would I describe that as? Uh, yeah, back in the day, I guess just like you described a um just a portfolio or like a, a a briefcase almost that people would carry around. Um but it's soft, right? It's soft. It's not as large as a briefcase at all. It really is a larger version of the notepad and they used to call that the portfolio, right? It is a portfolio, notepad, a couple other things in there. It's just a little larger. I think this one is a couple inches, two or three inches thick if it's fully expanded in there, if you have it full of electronics. Real nice piece. I'm excited to get it. It ships in February, so soon. Not soon enough. I have all these things. I buy them, and then I have to wait forever. I'm still waiting for my <laughs> spin coffee maker. This bad boy doesn't look like it's a cheap piece of equipment. No, it's not. I don't know that it will appeal to the masses. Uh, I would say if you are interested in it, now's the time because it's only going to go up. Yeah, that one was set me back a few hundo and it's going to go up another few hundo soon, probably. Yeah, it looks like most of them are in the 300 to almost $500 range. So they're pricey. They're pricey. And I'll say this, okay, try to save myself here a little bit. I don't, I live in a small place. I don't own a vehicle. I was living in a 400 square foot studio. So I just don't, I don't have a lot of possessions. I'm at a point now where when I buy something, I spend up, I trade up, I spend more money on the longer lasting, higher quality. The Dell XPS 13 wasn't a cheap laptop. I've, I've been through so many cheap laptops and, the, and they're disposable pieces of shit after 18 months. I said, you know what? I'm just going to save up. I haven't bought a laptop in three or four years because work has one. I just use the work one. I said, fuck it. I want to have my own laptop and I want to have something nice for the projects I'm working on and, and not always be using the work machine. And plus, it's, I'm pissed because I've been making an appeal to IT for years to get a new one and I'm losing that battle. So take matters into my own hands. But I do trade up on some of these things. So yeah, it's not a cheap piece of equipment, but I, it is a good build quality. It's, I expect it to last a long time. It does come with a lifetime warranty. And it, oh, it does come with the Japanese YKK zippers. You know, those are like the best zippers you can get. Best zippers money can buy. I was not going to buy it until you told me that, and now I'm sold. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. It actually has that engraved on the zipper. It's how you know that it's like, they're the best. <laughs> I feel like I'm taking up way too much time on this topic here. Yeah, we're just kind of bullshitting here. But we can move on to today's topic. We'll see how this goes. Again, I didn't do a lot of research on this. This could be a kind of a cleanup episode. It doesn't have to be as official maybe as some of the other, the last one was. I've been doing some research. 
poking around, looking for different tools. It's been a while since I've done any kind of front-end development. My role in the project that I'm working on, have been working on at the company for a while now, a little over a year, not a long time, is primarily middle tier API development. So I'm not doing anything on the front end, doing some database work, but I haven't touched JavaScript other than a few edits here or there, bug fixes, little changes, nothing significant, a project in view, for example, or any kind of MVVM pattern on the front end. I'm not doing that right now. I don't have anything at work that that requires that skill set. So I've been interested in creating my own project just to keep the skill set sharpened, keep sharpening the saw, right? I don't want to lose that skill. CSS is another thing that I've lost that skill. It, well, I don't want to say I've lost it, but I haven't been an active practitioner of it for a long time. And so I get worried that, man, there's been a lot of changes since last time I was doing some CSS. What am I missing out on now? Yeah, I don't, I'm in the same boat with you. Uh, as we work at a, the company that we're at currently, the CSS is generally pretty hands off. It's kind of given to the design team and they kind of take care of most of that. So I'm in the same boat with you. Um, I'm pretty much stuck in the same, I don't know, era as I guess that I came in, which would be kind of the, the, the big deals were you know, SAS and less, and you would use those through a grunt or a um, gulp type uh, build. Right. What do they call those? Task runners. There you go. Yeah, that's exactly right. And really to date ourselves, going back old school, the way we used to operate, I don't know how many people do this still. It'd be an interesting question to ask and get feedback on this too, but how many places today still operate with the, the PSD handoff? You know, that was how we did a lot of websites back in the day was design, put together the PSD and layered it and did everything that way and handed it off to the tech team and said, make it look like this. Well, the front end team, right? They handed it off to the front end guys and said, make this look identical. Pixel for yep, pixel. Take this PSD and yeah, exactly. Yep. Pixel precise, create the CSS an HTML document to make this look exactly like the PSD. Yeah, that was, there was even services that sprung up around that. So you could send a PSD to the service online and they would give you back uh, HTML and CSS rendered out. Right, exactly. That was the way that we operated for a long time, built a lot of websites that way. And actually a good segue into the first item I want to talk about. So the topic really that I came up with, because I didn't have any better to talk about today was, I had this idea of a developer toolbox roundup part one, because I want to keep it going. I think this is just a start, but I was looking online recently for different tools. I wanted to see maybe what's evolved on the front end since the last time I did a big project, see what things are coming up and new, what are really innovative. Found something cool. I'm sure you guys are familiar with Figma. Have you heard of Figma? I haven't heard of this particular product. However, I do believe I've heard of products that are similar in nature. Figma is fucking cool. I just started working with this a week ago. Super impressed with it. Well, first of all, what is it? It's it's all web based. Okay, you can you can do the Chrome wrapper thing where you can save it to your desktop and have a desktop app, but it's just a Chrome browser. It's all done in the browser, and it's really good performance for being in the browser. And it's a design prototype tool. What I like about Figma, it's it does have a lot of uh, utility for mobile app development, which I'm not doing a lot of that either. I'm trying to pet project there on doing some React Native as well just to get up to speed, but that's another story. This is great for mobile development because you can create your layers. It's very similar to Photoshop. If you're in Photoshop, the concepts are much the same. You have layers and you can, you know, different overlays and blends and effects and and all of that, but it it's super easy. It takes out a lot of the, I mean, I think, I think one challenge with Photoshop, it's not an easy tool just to show up and start using. It wasn't for me 15 years ago or 20 years ago, even when it was like Photoshop 4 or 3, whatever it was, you know, it required, I did it again, motherfucker. It requires a lot of time, a lot of patience, a lot of tutorials, and then you pick it up and you can do it. But this is a simpler approach to get in. So it has layering, it has all these things. You can create your, your screens or your views and it's a rapid prototyping tool. So you can see what your view is gonna look like on different form factors. iPhone 10, iPhone 6, 
Pixel 2, Galaxy, whatever the mobile device is, you can see. And it has it has special tooling built in to help you design the layouts for it. So you can say, well, okay, here's how I'm going to set it up the first time. And I want, if it's a larger device, then I want to make sure that the image stays centered. And if it's a smaller device, then, you know, whatever. You, you start out on, on, on the small one, you can tell it how to scale up. And you can even get as sophisticated as linking those pages together. So you could have what looks like a functional application that's all just done through this web software, through this, through this web page. So this is where I was saying earlier that I've seen similar products like this that do really what this amounts to is it's like a visual wireframe, right? So yes. back in the day, you would create wireframes and you would create, you know, they were literally wireframes. They look like wire documents and you would create multiples of these and it would kind of show the flow of, of an application. So you'd show one screen and then maybe there's a button in the wireframe and then you would say, oh, if you click this button, then you go to the next document, which is another wireframe for the next view. Well, what this does instead is it provides you a actual interactive clickable document that you can actually do the same type of thing. So it's a much more modernized approach to wireframing. And it skips a few steps in the design process because really you're not even wireframing at this point. Wireframing, you don't have consideration for the look and feel really. It's about placement and... Yep. It's it's kind of layering them all together. It's layering design and wireframing yeah. into one product. It comes with a few different templates that you get out of the box to play with. And so the one that they have here is this art museum app and there are three, six, nine, nine pages. and they're kind of in this linear fashion. You can see each page and hide it and show it or whatever. But it looks like the final application. You even have the the iPhone graphics with the battery status up on top and the Wi-Fi and the time. Every detail of the final app is encapsulated in the design here. And then you can go as far as to export CSS. If you want to use the CSS that it generates for you, you can. Uh, you don't have to. but Really nice, I think, for starting a project, especially when, you know, if you're doing some freelance work or working on a tight deadline, it's a nice way to get something quickly prototyped, present it to the business stakeholders who maybe aren't so sure what they want or they're going to want to make these changes. If you started developing this, they're going to make 100 changes. Well, here you go. You put it on this screen and you show them kind of how to point and click and they can already make those decisions and say, no, I don't like this. We need to remove this page make that a modal dialogue, whatever it is. And you're going to save a ton of time because you can almost have it. You really have a complete product here that you can start developing then and and skin it and, and off and go. Yeah, I think if you're not using this sort of a tool to do your design and prototyping, I think then you're probably stuck in the stone age a little bit. This is definitely, definitely in mobile development for sure is what everybody does. This is the standard that everybody does. Uh, I don't know if that's true of the desktop space quite as much, but it should be. And I think this is definitely a pretty solid tool that, that I would definitely love to use if I was working on prototyping anything new. Yeah. Like I said, I have a project coming up that I'm working on. That's, that's react native and I'm going to use this. I have, I've been out of the space long enough. I didn't know that these things were out there with this, with these capabilities. So this has been good. This was a good one for me. Figma, figma.com, F-I-G-M-A.com. Check it out. Yeah. Cool product. We'll save the others for roundup part two. That was a brief roundup, a little intro on design prototyping for mobile apps. I don't know. I guess since we're going to do that, is there anything in the design space you want to talk about? I know there's creative cloud. The, the challenge that I've seen and the the arguments against creative cloud is that it's a desktop app that exists in the cloud. It hasn't pivoted to cover collaboration very well for teams doing design the way that we do Slack and we have chat now, right? We have these ways that we can communicate like that. We, you don't have that with the creative cloud in the way that you start to see with there's Figma. Uh, there's another one too. Damn it. What's the name of the other one? Not totally sure what you mean by creative cloud either the adobe creative suite oh got you okay just just the fact that adobe is a cloud offering now it really can be misleading it isn't a web it is in the web well you download the app and it connects to the cloud 
it's it's an extended version of the desktop application. Did it really bring additional collaboration to the to the program? I don't think it, the collaboration there is what it's not the slack of of design, right? It's still a desktop app that happens to have a cloud back end and backbone. Yeah, uh, every uh, creative cloud product that I use, which is primarily Lightroom and Photoshop, they are cloud backed in that you can store your files in the cloud, but I don't think that there's a lot of collaborative tools in there. Um, Lightroom does give you support to be able to do some of the editing in via a web browser and it'll translate to your desktop app as well, but it's not it's not the full application on the web or just the application being on the web. It's a little bit of a different paradigm. The other design tool I was talking about that is Sketch. Have you used Sketch before? Oh, sure. I mean, I've not used it, but I definitely know about know of it. Yeah, Mac only. It's That was one. I'm not a designer, but I was one consideration for getting a Mac is that I would have to Hackintosh this thing if I wanted to use Sketch. It's not a web-based product, but it's very much a, looks like a teamwork collaboration design tool. Yeah, I think it's very, very popular on the Mac, but uh, yeah, I'm not a designer either, so I've not really had the opportunity to use it. I'm sure Casey or somebody at work probably has used the crap out of it. But. So next time we'll, on the Toolbox Roundup Part 2, we'll talk IDEs. Ooh, I like talking about that. There's been some really cool stuff going on in the IDE space. Why don't you take us in the news here? We don't have a ton of time left, but there's a few things we wanted to talk about in the news. I was going to skip out of the Google Calendar update one, unless you really, really want to talk about that. I don't know that there's really all that much to talk about there. I'll touch on it briefly, just because I've been a Google Calendar user forever. They're phasing out the, the design, so you're going to new design. I like the design. This isn't a complaint. I think this is great. I wish they did this a long time ago, actually. I like it. I don't know how you feel about it, but it's already showing up if you're in Google the G Suite now, the old Google Apps for your domain. If you're a G Suite owner, so you've got a custom domain using Google tools, you can enable that feature in your admin panel and get it. And everybody else will get it on, on Google end of February. Yeah, I'm so far I'm, I'm a very big fan. The, the design was cleaned up quite heavily. It looks far more modern. It adheres to the Google material design standards. Um, it's much, much more responsive than the old site is. I would say effectively it's easier to use. You know, things are more obvious and, and much more uh, properly placed in terms of, of UI. Uh, so yeah, overall, I think it's a great update. And I use Google Calendar for all my personal calendars. And we have I have one with my wife that we share. Same. Uh, for shared events. So, I mean, we definitely use Google, Google Calendar on a regular basis, although maybe not directly through the Google site. I'm definitely utilizing the service quite re quite regularly. Very good. Enough said about the Google Calendar design. There's not much else to talk about, but I thought it was worthy of bringing up. It's going to look different. If you can get on it now, check it out. It's pretty cool. Let's talk about Windows 10 sets. Yeah. Have you tried this yet? I haven't gotten my hands on this one yet. I have not tried it. I watched the video that they provide at the URL that we have here in the show notes. Um, and it looked really cool. Um, it's it's a really interesting concept. The idea of the whole thing is that for each window that you have in Windows, you effectively get tabs, just like you would have in most modern browsers. And the tabs aren't restricted to, I guess, uh, Windows functions. So what you might have is a window with Chrome loaded in it, for instance, I guess. And you might have another tab in that window that is Photoshop. And then you might have another tab that is Windows Explorer. And you might have another tab that's, you know, whatever, you know, XYZ application. It doesn't matter. You can have effectively different apps loaded into different tabs. So this is some trippy shit. What happens if you put Chrome inside of a tab? Do you get tabs in tabs? <laughs> I would expect because, I mean, effectively what you have is you have a containered application inside that window, right? Yeah, you'd have a top level layer of tabs and then you'd have a layer of tabs for Chrome below that active tab. Wow, that's, yep. that's some crazy shit to contemplate. There. <laughs> so the, the really cool function of this that I was really impressed with in the demo that they did via the video was that if you close out of all, let's say you create some sort of document and close out of the all the windows and tabs that you have open, 
the next time that you come and you open that document, it remembers what applications you had open in parallel while you were making modifications to that document. And it'll ask you if you want to reopen all those applications in addition to the document. So effectively bringing you right back to the workspace that you were using when you created the document in the first place, which that's pretty damn cool. I'm very excited about this feature. I think it's a long time coming. It's going to change the way that you work in Windows. And here's the deal. How many... It's it's awkward now. It's awkward the way it works because we are on the internet a ton. You've got Chrome with a hundred tabs open, and you got to try to juggle between what's going on. You can you can have them split off. So you could have maybe if you're doing Project A, you can have Chrome open with three or four things. If you're using Google Docs, then maybe you can have a, your Word, you know, document in one tab. You can have the browser in another tab. It's somewhat context relevant. Oh, that was a, that's a name that's familiar to me. That was an old company. <laughs> that's a company that doesn't exist anymore. They're not there anymore. That's right. They changed names. Anyway, I'm excited about this because this is how you should be working, right? It provides a context for the, for everything that you're doing. So I'm working on a project and maybe I need to have a code editor open and I need, yeah, that was an example, Visual Studio Code. I want to have Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio open and I'm constantly on Stack Overflow. So why not have a tab in Visual Studio to Stack Overflow that I can go and search for whatever I'm working on. And maybe I want to have another tab for the localhost application that I'm working on. There's all kinds of things you could do here. If you're doing a research paper, you can have a Word document for that and you could have four tabs for different things you're researching and maybe a YouTube channel that has clips about it too. And they're all in one place. So now you're not going back and forth and doing as much task switching to find one thing or another. It's all in this bundled up little window. That's interesting that you are kind of alluding to it being a more organized uh, methodology, which I do kind of agree. The It's funny because I have a note here that says lack of organization. Oh, um, <laughs> you're just trying to be difficult again tonight, aren't you, Kyle? God. Hey, well, you know, I can't, you know, we got to have differing views here. We're going to become boring. <laughs> Let me hear this. I'm excited. To hear this. <laughs> uh, I really set you up for that one. What I, <laughs> I know this better be a fucking gem right here. Yeah. Uh, what I was kind of thinking, I guess, is that as you are opening these applications or these sets of applications, I can I can see them in the future getting very very unwieldy. I, I know a lot of people that already have, for instance, tab kind of tab mania in Chrome. You know, they have. 50 tabs open at one time and I watch people like click tab to tab to tab to tab to figure out what the hell they have. All you open. can see is the icon. There's no way you're reading text up there. Maybe maybe in some cases I see that you can't even see that. It just looks like a little like triangle kind of. Wow. That's pretty hardcore. <laughs> so, I mean, I can see some of that kind of thing occurring here and that being problematic in addition to if you have in your in your scenario, let's say you have, I don't know, six different kind of groupings that are context aware, right? So maybe you have your group for work. Over here, you have your group for home. Over here, you have a group doing something for some side project. I don't know, whatever. So you have like six different groups. Well, without kind of being really apparent, you all of a sudden have 15 to 20 applications open, right? That are sure. all drawing resource. So it feels like it could easily become really resource intensive without you having a whole lot of I don't know, insight as to why that's happening or how that's happening. I don't know. It feels like that could get lost very easily. Okay. Yeah. Well, huh? I don't know. You know, if you, you, cause if you think about to your example, you know, you have a stack overflow, you have your visual studio, you have your local host, whatever your visual studio is a hog. Chrome is a hog. And you just minimize that tab set down to the, to the toolbar. Right. And now, that's still running. All those programs are still running, but you might have now an, another tool set up that you're doing stuff with. And, you know, maybe let's say one of them's a game. Maybe you're gaming now. Well, all that shit's still running, right? Yeah. So I feel it's a little unwieldy in that respect. And, you know, maybe when you get your hands on it, maybe those things will change and it'll feel a lot more comfortable. But just from the brief overview that I got from the video, that kind of felt like, man, this could get kind of out of control really quickly and, and be resource intensive more so than than you might expect. It's something to keep in mind. I would need to have the experience before I could say it's hard to picture 
for me what it what it would be like. I like the idea conceptually, but maybe if I'm in there doing it, then I have a different opinion about it. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Until you get your hands on it, I'd, it's hard to make a guess as to how it exactly it's going to work based on the, the short video demo that they gave. So the deal is it's in the Insider program, so people can get access to that already if they are on the uh, fast track to Windows updates. So, yeah, running Insider on that, but I don't know. I should pay attention to how this needs to be done. Oh, the other caveat, of course, is that the, in the preview, it works on uh, Universal Windows platform applications, which I'm not, I don't, I don't use those. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited to see. Do, is there a rollout date for this? Do they have any idea when this is actually going to roll out? I didn't see. Yeah, they, I don't believe they have any kind of, yeah, it's early not committing to delivery time, no guarantee they'll be in the next major update, da 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 due in March or April. And because it's so complex, it could take a lot longer. So who knows? It may never see the light of day, but it it's an interesting concept. Part and parcel to that is the Windows timeline. Do you see that? That's in there too? No, I didn't see that. I could I can't talk a whole lot about it, but that was interesting because it was a different view that was based on timeline of all the things you're using. So it's if you have 50 windows open, this is your complexity issue, right? They're trying to resolve that. So you go to the timeline view and now it'll show you what you've been most recently working on. And you can go back down the timeline and find your Word document or whatever from four hours ago, buried down in there somewhere. It gives you a nicer representation of through time what you've been working on. Yeah, I think that's a very helpful tool. You know, recent Recently opened or just, you know, straight text lists of recently used or open things isn't always helpful. So I think that's a, it'd be nice to have a very visual diagram of what you've been using lately. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. So yeah, up next uh, is, is a story that kind of became hot news for a short time recently where Firefox began the auto installation of an add-on that People had not requested, and people didn't know what in the hell it was. So um, what happened here is that Firefox installed the, an add-on that was a kind of companion, I guess, to this game called Mr. Robot. That It enhanced the game in some way. Um, and users started noticing this. They started noticing this new add-on in their browser, and they were starting to worry that they were hacked or that something was happening with their machine in some nefarious way because none of them installed this and there was no notification that it was happening. Oh, Mr. Robot was a TV series there on, on was it Netflix? It just says, yeah, it just says in the article that it was a Mr. Robot mystery game, a companion or it enhances a Mr. Robot mystery game. Okay. I think something about it was a promotional campaign between Firefox and the TV series brings an alternate reality game to your browser. So there's the game. A lot of users thought they got hacked. Yep. And, uh, the description was really poor. It just, the description of the actual add-on just says, my reality is simply different than yours. So it wasn't even helpful to understand what, what it was. Ooh. So people were really freaking out and wondering what what this add-on was all about. Well, the, the bigger problem here is that Firefox generally has always been a champion of security and and kind of user users being independent or not being forced into doing things that they don't want to do. So this was really, really out of their nature to do something like this. And and I don't really understand how this made it made it through any kind of logical steps to get released. I don't know how somebody didn't stop this and say, no, this is a horrible idea. What the hell are we doing? Yeah, that sounds pretty bad. I don't know about that. So I have the Firefox browser. I downloaded the, what the hell is the new one called again? The Oracle. I don't remember what they The what Oracle. Sure. We'll go with the Oracle. Uh, I have the new Firefox browser. Firefox the Ocho. I forgot. <laughs> I have the new Firefox browser, and we, we talked about it on another episode. However, Firefox Quantum, by the way. There you go. That's right. It has its own performance issues, or at least for me, it has performance issues that have made it kind of a non-starter. So I have I didn't experience this myself, but apparently a ton of other people did, and it blew up on Reddit, and of course all the news outlets and stuff like that carried it. Uh, and it was a big deal for a minute, and it's died down about as quickly as it blew up. So Wow. And that brings us to the end of the news, and uh, on to what's news for next week's show. Well, I'm really going to give you a teaser next week because I only have one item that I'm going to talk about today. So you're going to have to really tune in if you're curious to know what else is on on the docket. 
But next week is Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas. Well, by the time this airs, it will be Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas. The next episode, we will hopefully be bringing you some of the news and events and updates and exciting products and big screens and latest news in, in consumer electronics. Should be some really cool stuff happening in home automation, virtual reality, augmented reality, mobile. We already know about some of the new laptops, the Ultrabooks. There are a few other people followed suit after Google, after Dell came out today with the XPS update. I think HP released some stuff. So there's some stuff leaking now, and we're going to hear a lot more by the next episode. So my wife, you know, Lauren said she was, she would be doing some intel for us down there. She's going out there to represent her company, which is, is really cool. We should talk about them sometime too, but they're in a tech rehab space. So they do augmented reality and virtual reality for rehab, and they have some cool devices. They have a smart glove and some other things. They have some new products that they're unveiling too, I believe. So I don't know what they are. I can't talk about it. I'm, I'm, I don't even know. So don't ask me. But we'll <laughs> know more next week out in Vegas. So I'd like to be able to talk about some of that stuff. And I'm sure we'll have some other amazing, riveting. Uh, maybe we can get our colleague on to talk about some of his uh, points on net neutrality next time too. That'd be that'd be awesome. Yeah, we'll be talking about absurdly large TVs with ridiculous resolutions and yeah we'll have to yeah pretty soon you'll have to be looking at your tv with like a magnifying glass to see all the detail yeah awesome i hope that this sounds okay i'm noticing that i was talking quieter this time i can do that oh yeah i see that yours are mine are all the way at the top what the fuck you're running hot and i'm kind of running out of steam i need some i'm gonna take this weekend off because it was just a fucking week a lot happened this week a lot of content was created this week and a lot of good work was happening too. Yeah, I'm excited, dude. This is an experiment. We're trying to figure out what works, what doesn't, and there's no rules here. I, I got a $30 credit today on Facebook, so I boosted our post. I boosted, I boosted your post on the Coffee Codecast on number seven. Okay. And it looks like it's it's just been running for a few hours, so we'll give it some time and see what happens. Cool. Yeah, I mean, if you just happen to catch the right person, in theory, I mean that could that could make it blow up all by itself. But that's another Gary Vaynerchuk ism, by the way. One is greater than zero. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree with that. Yeah, one hundred so, percentile. So that's our that's our motto too. We like that. One is greater than zero. So we're not looking for a million, but we just need to get one. We need to get one more. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hustle, and and it's happening. Get our hustle on. Get our hustle on.
da, 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 psh, post show. All right. Woo! <laughs> What's going on? What do you have here? Yeah, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about customer service. And that's come up for me a number of times this week. Um, the most recent one yesterday came up because we sometimes order our groceries via Safeway's delivery program. I don't know if you're familiar with that at all. I know they do a delivery service that's similar to Amazon Fresh. Yes, exactly. But they don't have like a monthly fee uh, to do it. Nice. So we've done that a number of times and had pretty good success with it. Uh, generally, if you give them like a four hour window of, of availability, they'll give you free delivery even. So we've traditionally done that and it's and it's worked really well. Well, the last three times that we've done this, it's been nothing but a shit show. So the 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 probably what two weeks ago, maybe I did an order and what the hell happened there? I made the order and it processed it or it at least indicated that it processed it. and the hell happened i'm trying to remember and ultimately what ended up happening is something went wrong and i called their customer service and they said well the order never went through so don't worry about it just go ahead and go online and reorder oh come on so i was like all right well i'll go ahead and do that that's not a problem whatever so i went ahead and did that set up the delivery for the next day and it came and it arrived like it should have and i went to the door and I got the groceries from the guy and I was bringing them upstairs to put them back. And the same dude knocks on my door about five minutes later and he has the same fucking order again. And he's like, this one's for you too. <laughs> and it's all the same shit. It's duplicate. the same exact shit in, du in duplicate. So that pissed me off. Well, fast forward to, gosh, what was it? Maybe earlier this week, I guess I put in another order and Everything went through correctly. We got an order confirmation. We had a delivery window. Everything was great. Well, the fuckers never showed up ever. It never, sh never happened. Oh, fuck. So it took, came out of our account. They took our money. Like everything was fine. Everything looked correct. But yeah, they never showed up. So they say about this. <laughs> so Christina wrote him a pretty bitchy email, you know, and said something nice. to the effect of what the fuck's going on. You know, we're never ordering from you again. This is horrible. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you gave us twice the shit and then none of it. <laughs> and they reply and like, just are like, hey, we're going to give you your money back. That's it. <laughs> they didn't say sorry. They didn't say, hey, let us make it up to you. They didn't say, hey, let us deliver. Like, I was just like kind of flabbergasted by the lack of customer service that was shown, I guess, is, is what I was getting at. And here's what I'm going to say about this. Here's the fucking thing. Like, I will not shed a tear when Safeway closes its fucking doors. People have a problem with Amazon and the domination of Amazon, but there's a fucking reason why Amazon is worth $8 trillion or whatever the hell they're worth today, right? It's because their customer service is phenomenal. That would never, that would never happen at Amazon. You would never nope. have that happen. Nope. And if they, they, would, they would give you the whole fucking order for free before they would do something like that. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it, it makes me sad. I, I am sympathetic to the workers that would be displaced i'm sympathetic to you know you now you have these vacant retail buildings that's not good for the community i understand that but you as a business have to get your shit together and do your shit right if you're winning in business then they're not gonna have that problem and they're not trying to adapt when you know, that's your customer service model is that i don't give a fuck then i don't care that you're going out of business then good riddance like be gone yesterday and somebody else will come in and do it better yep it boggles my mind i mean the <laughs> it's very obvious in business that the customer is always first, right? If you if you please the customer, you're going to make money because the customer is going to come back to you and they're going to pay you and they're going to love you and, and things are going to be great. You know, even even our company made this mistake at some point and kind of got, I, for lack of a better word, they got greedy and they didn't treat the customer correctly and it fucked us over, right? And now we're going the other way and we're treating the customers really, really well. And hey, what do you know? Here comes floods of money, right? So it just boggles my mind that Safeway would be this way and act this way, especially from a company of their size. Yeah, it's irresponsible. They're they're doing a disservice to their own employees because they are going to go out of business and nobody's going to fucking care because they're going to have Amazon who shows up in 30 minutes and gets it right. And if they don't get it right, then they make it right. So fuck them. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, that's all I had. It was just kind of a bitch that I was... 
a gripe, I guess, that I I was just like, damn, dude, like, what the hell is wrong with these companies that, like, customer service is everything, right? Especially if you're working in an online business where you don't have face-to-face interactions and you can't correct mistakes like that, just kind of on, you know, on the fly. Yeah. Customer service is everything. And not everybody can afford to say, hey, you know what? We're going to give you that for free. Fine. I'm not asking for that. Just handle it in a better way, right? Don't act like, uh, hey, I don't really give a fuck that maybe you needed those groceries for a specific event or you had to go out of your way to replace them because they never showed up. You know, fuck that. But here's your money back. You know, it would have been a whole different thing entirely if they said, oh my gosh, you know, we're so sorry. Like this has been going on with our system. Whatever it is, we're going to make it up to you. We're going to send the order out. You know, the soonest we can send it out is this time. And, uh, you know, whatever. Maybe we'll give you a gift card for next time or throw in, I don't know, whatever it is, but the approach, the attitude that they had was just unacceptable. Yeah. I mean, they did say, they did apologize. I guess they say, we apologize for the inconvenience of being charged for an order that you did not receive, which sounds really fucking condescending, right? Yeah. Alicia, Alicia with contact ID three, five, four, seven, seven, five, eight, two. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That line was probably pinned to the, you know, cork board on her desk next to the. Uh, no, you know. that line was in their fucking. Here's our auto responder for yeah. people that are bitching about their order. She didn't even right. fucking read it. Oh, man. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. And uh, now, you know, I guess I'll pay $15 to order from Amazon Fresh now. Well, I don't know. I I don't like that. I don't like the fact that they're the only show in town, but they are doing things right and that people should take notice. The Safeway should care. There should be somebody out there who's saying, look, we can win on customer service. Maybe we don't have the most streamlined process. Maybe we don't have the greatest prices on everything, but we're going to make sure that we provide good service. And I think that's who wins, you know. (laughs) 